The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. So, some progress. Uh, uh, I have changed my little test bean so that uh, it keeps going in whatever straight direction it's going until it gets to the end, edge of the universe, can't go any farther. Then it picks a new random direction, but now in addition it's got a chance that gets bigger over time of checking to see if there's an empty spot next door where it puts another copy of its own type of bean. Splits at the end of the universe. Let's take a look at it. All right, this is a test. Um, I've got some of the lights on. I've got one power zone behind me. Uh, I'm going to turn off the lights. And, well, I'll plug it in, and then I'm going to turn off the lights, and we'll see what we can see. Let's seed the universe. Is that fizzle? Oh yeah, I think it is. So, uh, uh, like I said at the story so far, one year summary, generalized hardware anxiety disorder that something is going to go wrong in the electronics. This is something that's gone wrong. Uh, I have a, a theory, although I've looked at this before and I can't exactly figure it out, uh, that uh, the the beagle bone, the, the processor I'm using, it senses a few of its pins when you first power it up, and it uses the values of those pins to decide what kind of mode it's supposed to be in, and it's possible if you have the wrong values on those pins to get it into, into a circumstance where it won't boot at all. And I knew about that, I have special design that's supposed to handle it, but this be particular behavior that certain tiles won't boot, like when they're connected to someone else that's already booted says to me that somehow there's some leakage currents or some voltages or something in there that I'm going to have to revisit. 
which on the one hand should be completely horribly distressing, but on the other hand, it doesn't happen on all of the tiles. So worst comes to worst, I could just you know put them in a separate pile for a while. And uh, on the other hand, I'm making enough progress. You know, I can sort of the end is in sight uh, uh, of this phase of the the T2 tile part of it itself that I am getting a little cocky. <laughs> said uh, uh, that I feel like you know we'll solve it somehow I have some ideas about it but first step by step Living Computation Foundation had a couple of more uh, uh, folks uh, contribute thank you uh, um, <clears throat> so now we're into the the 30s I haven't sent the to the official thank you notes I haven't run the the script again I'm sorry about that I'll get it in a couple of days uh, uh, the conference is coming up next week that's really soon the tutorial on splat and Ulam which we're getting to the point that we'll be able to do demos in splat and Ulam we're not there yet that we'll be able to run on the grid I mean right now it's just a power zone but there's could be nine more of those that could be going uh, eight more of those anyway that could be going around it uh, that's Monday. <clears throat> also, uh, the uh, so last time I had shown this trace uh, logger that would uh, you know merge together, weave together trace files from multiple tiles and try to align them on time based on sync tags that are put into the trace files, so that I could see what was going on. And in the last two weeks, I did a lot of trying to see what was going on. And, and so I would run them until somebody you know hit a breakpoint, and then I would investigate. Well, but that turns out to be rather difficult. Uh, to actually make work because all of the other guys that don't hit a breakpoint they have timeouts like we saw in the demo <coughs> and if you don't respond within a certain amount of time they figure you've gone nuts somehow and they move on well a lot of times they just fail these days because again we're trying to do our best effort to catch as much of this stuff as we can there will be failures even when the thing is all done it's all as good as it's going to be there will be failures that the software level is going to have to deal with that's the essence of best effort computing but we'd like to catch as much of it the best effort before we acknowledge that there will be some things that we can't get so the timeouts happen the failures will happen those will get fixed so really it turns out it was more useful to me not necessarily to be hitting a breakpoint but just to be getting as much trace data as I can uh, more and more and then looking at it afterwards and I found out that what I was spending most of my time doing was going through the weaved the interwoven results uh, seeing what happened and trying to reconstruct in my head okay we've got a, a active event 23 on 0 we got active event 17 on 1 and it's in state this and this state that and so forth and finally I said I gotta make another tool uh, I, the, 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 I found a bug and that eliminated a whole bunch of stuff and then the, the uh, next levels of bugs were significantly more complicated uh, and they also took significantly longer to happen so I ended up doing two things. Uh, number one, I created an interactive curses-based version of the Weaver so that the window down here is the woven uh, trace files from, in this case, slash zero and slash one, two tiles that are involved. But up here we have an event window map where the, the, the program is integrating over the events over time to say, well, we've got A21 on zero, we've got uh, A19 on one, it's in state this, it's the, so it's looking at each trace as we scroll through it and updating this. It's been a fantastic help. It's got limitations um, because it's doing this integral, and in particular, since there's so much trace data, I was blowing out the disk. I could, <laughs> there was not enough space on the tiles to store these gigantic things. I mean, I had a failure that happened after almost a hundred million debug events, after almost a hundred million trace events like that. Uh, um, so, I, in addition to making it interactive, I also made it accept uh, rolling buffers. So the trace thing can now just say, you say give me uh, eight megabytes of trace and once you go over that start deleting the older files automatically so that we can put a bound on it and that means that the uh, Weaver won't necessarily be able to integrate everything properly because it's possible that the beginning is more than eight megabytes old that's pretty rare but it's the general problem that goes on this helped me a tremendous amount uh, to find the next bug we still have more as we saw uh, um, uh, we have more here Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we also have in kernel panics, um, which I have yet to diagnose completely. Uh, 
process ITC packet shipper that you may see up here. That's one of the kernel threads that I wrote that's dealing with the things. I've seen it mentioned a couple of times, but for some reason I'm not getting very good logs. I reboot after the crash and there's a nice hole in the middle log file where more information would like to be. So this has not been localized yet. It's easy for me to believe it has something to do with uh, uh, the um, uh, a buffer uh, running out that I didn't handle properly because it never happened and now it's happening. That remains to be seen. Uh, uh, okay, and, and that's it. So the next update will be in two weeks. That will be after uh, the Artificial Life uh, Conference next week. Uh, um, I want to make more demo spaces where, I mean, we're going to be getting to the point where we could write little bits of ULAM and splat code and we could run them on little chunks of grid. It would be fun. Uh, uh, I'll see you next time.